here. We shall now go on to our next speaker, Dr. Nirmal Freddy, another very uh, popular uh, person in uh, ophthalmology and uh, all of us have known about his uh, NABH talks and uh, the amount of knowledge which comes through. And uh, he, he would be, he's a, a chairman and medical director of the Nirmal Eye Hospital, Tamram uh, in Chennai. And uh, he, sh he would be uh, give, teaching, showing us a teaching video too. So on to you, Dr. Nirmal. Earth's most fearsome predator, like the great white shark in the deep, white cataract can be dangerous if you are not prepared. Continuous curvilinear capsular cysts in white cataract is one of the challenges most of us face. Like confronting the great white sharks, we need to understand the warning signals, know the body language and also know the basics of the flag systems. So essentially if we know the risk know the types, it will be easy to confront these kind of challenges and catastrophe. Surgery in white cataract has multiple challenges. The capsular excess is essentially difficult because of many reasons. One of them is less cortical support. The nucleus is dense is heat build up or wound burn because of the dense nucleus it's difficult to chop or split because of the leathery cataract and can lead to endothelial damage and more inflammation so essentially high risk of complications so what strategies work best for a white cataract to understand this you need to know the types of cataract the first one is mature white lens with a golden nuclear hue. The common one is white cortical cataract with spokes, clefts and posterior capsule opacification. The third one is swollen intumescent cataract where rexis would be difficult because of the intralenticular pressure. This also has abundant vacuoles. And the fourth one is liquefied milky cortex or the morganian cataract which is rarely seen nowadays. All this can be associated with raised intralenticular pressure and raised intraocular pressures. So the third aspect of confronting the white cataract is CCC again. The first C starts with construction of the incision. The incision has to be limbal or slightly scleral and in good form. The good form incision is basically a square incision with equal thickness in the roof and floor. The second C is see the capsule properly. Good staining of capsule is essential with trepan blue to enhance visualization under air needle. And it's essential. We also do a two small side port incision for closed chamber maneuver. The second, third C is decompression and visco attack. We need to decompress, remove the liquefied cortical matter to reduce the capsular pressure. A syringe that has released suction can really help and the appropriate usage of OVD is essential to reduce the AC pressure to make the anterior chamber pressure more than intralenticular pressure, essentially push the capsule down and work through the paracentis so that the OVD doesn't escape through the main wound and do a gentle and careful CCC. There are different ways to skin a cat. You can use a Utrata forceps, capsule holding, micro forceps or 26 gauge needle, whatever it is. Uh, in these kind of cataract, a capsule holding micro forceps is easy to hold and manipulate the capsule. You can also use various techniques like double rexus or onion peel rexus or a large rexus at one sitting.
So essentially the checklist for safe FACO in white cataract starts with a thorough preoperative reassessment. Biometry, not only to know the power but also the thickness of the lens so that we are prepared. And of course the B-scan integrity of posterior capsule uh, to be prepared. And we also need to check the backup apart from the capsule forceps, trepan blue and OVD. You need to have a vitrectomy cutter and machine ready as backup. And also backup IOLs, 3Ps, PMMA or scleral fixated IOL. So we need to have a good pre-op evaluation, plan and prepare for the surgery. Visualization is important. Use appropriate OVD, particularly high density, either viscoat. And decompression is necessary. Aspirate the cortical matter or use a high density viscoelastic substance. And CCC by any means start small or double or onion ring and do a thorough, uh, do a gentle or slow FACO. So like the myth associated with white cataract, risk of complications with white cataracts are magnified. The sharks are dangerous and man eaters, but same way white cataracts can be difficult at times and always lead to complication is a myth. The fact is chairs and electric appliances kill more people than sharks, same way system and human errors cause more complications than white cataract itself. Poor understanding, inadequate training and poor backup in OT can cause more complications than the cataract itself. So understand the basics, be bold, have good backup and you can handle white cataract with confidence like these people handling the white sharks. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot Dr. Nirmal for uh, putting it all across in a very interesting manner. Uh, I have a question for Dr. Mahipal and uh, Dr. Namrita on this. I think both of you all use intra-op OCT. Do you feel it has any added advantage in these kind of intumescent cataracts? Sir? Namrita, all yours are not. Then I'll say, I'll say I agree with you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I myself don't know, so you're fine. I actually wanted to know whether, of course, in an ASOCT, okay. you might know there are more fluid clefts and all that beforehand, mm. but intraop OCT, how it would help, I clearly didn't know. I just thought I'd ask. So the intraop is the same, it, that's before you start the capsule or excess. So I think uh, Dr. Namrata and Dr. Tityal, they have published papers, so they have actually divided into and cataracts, right, uh, Namrata, according yes. to the... Yes, sir. So, Maybe you can go ahead and do it because you have a publication. So uh, otherwise, I am a guy who uh, would uh, handle a white cataract with a femto uh, because that's something where uh, the margin of having a rex is going off is very little. But uh, I think uh, you can get great uh, outputs in the intraop OCT and you can actually divide and you can find out as to where the clefts are and as to what kind of uh, 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 moving out of the rexes or Argentinian flag, etc. You can get. So maybe Namrata can uh, uh, tell more. So basically, more. basically, if you see that there are those black areas present in between, that mm -hmm. means you that means you can be sure that it is not completely fluid. So you, when you will make a neck on the capsule, then it, it, the milky fluid is not going to come out. Yeah. But if it is a complete washout and you see no of those black areas or the clefts are not there then you can be absolutely sure that when you give a neck, the fluid is going to come out. So you will take all precautions. So it does help in, uh, in, in that way to see, you know, how your white cataract is uh, going to behave in terms of rexes. Basically. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, Dr. Ajay or Dr. Sandeep, I wanted to ask you all, I haven't done that, but would you actually contemplate doing multiple small can opener kind of cuts and then completing the rexes? Maybe when you make multiple extend, uh, incisions, the extension, uh, red six extension becomes uh, less probable. Have you all ever, th any of you thought of it? No, as a primary procedure, no, definitely not. I no, mean, many not, times not when really. it is extended to mm. join the two ends, maybe, but then as a primary procedure, no, I think, the uh, moment I nick. Yeah. I, I think the nick that you make should not be radial, like you vote for any cataract, but it can be a semi-lunar or a semi-circular one. So you are actually directing the force and a direction of the neck or direction of the extension to another, you know, vector, not yes. exactly diagonally opposite the one which you have initially created. So if you make a semi-lunar or a semi-circular thing, then it is better rather than making a radial neck as you initiate the capsular axis. But I think sir put it very nicely that femto is the way to go if it is a white cataract. 
Yes. So doing a can opener is counterintuitive, I'll say, because it's the first cut that you have to actually first nick that you have, as uh, Dr. Ramta has rightly said, uh, if you place it properly, then you can start with a small rexacy. Once the fluid has come out, mm-hmm. uh, the pressure and then you can suck out uh, whatever uh, is there, then uh, you can easily do it. But putting multiple uh, nicks uh, would be counterintuitive because any time uh, from any of these, it can uh, run away. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the reasons when uh, when FACO came in the first time around, uh, the, the nucleus would come out, rents and all. That's why it didn't really work at that particular time. Rexis is integral. So even if you have a runoff, um, even if you have half Rexis complete, that's better than having uh, multiple can openers. So that's, I think, uh, would be counterintuitive. The first nick is something which is very important and then smaller Rexis and then circle it around and make it bigger uh, once the... Uh, internal lenticular pressure is uh, taken care of. But uh, the suffice to say, as uh, in a femto laser, you're working on a closed chamber. That is the biggest advantage that you have. So the runoff is uh, really not there. But uh, despite doing a femto, I will always use a dye. Uh, because once the uh, fluid comes out, there could be skip areas. Oh, then you have little skip areas, and then you can uh, use your micro forceps to uh, kind of uh, complete the rexes. Thank you very much, Dr.